10, 20, 30, 40 percent of the people in the United States are not doing that well economically, and many of them, and many of those are minorities and immigrants, have not do, been doing well for generations. And we've not been talking seriously about how to address that challenge, which is a challenge of inclusion, it's a challenge of education and skills attainment, and as we suggested during the discussion, it's a challenge that I think is best met by collaborative behavior. And that's another thing that I find disappointing is that by and large, we have not seen great examples of collaborative behavior on the national stage. So th that's, a, that's a challenge, uh, both in terms of economic goals to achieve and behaviors that would meet those, those challenges. It's also a question about economic inequities in the country. And as you said, as we unmask some of that, as we dive a little bit below the, the aggregate, we see a lot of economic, perhaps we could call it injustice or inequities. When the Fed is at its best, what is the Fed doing to address that? So our, our major goal is, is this monetary policy responsibility. Monetary policy probably can't address those sorts of issues. Um, we also have responsibility for keeping financial institutions stable. But one thing that we in Boston and many other reserve banks are doing is partnering, collaborating with a variety of institutions to try to foster new ways of thinking about economic development that will have population level impacts over the long run. Now, you know, politicians understandably have somewhat shorter horizons than many of us do. The Fed has, we hope, a long horizon. So we hope to be around for, for the indefinite future. We're in for the long haul. The kinds of changes that we would like to see occur are not going to happen in a year or two. They will take several years to take place and have effects uh, to the, the many people we'd like to see benefit. We're not allowed to spend our money to you know, provide cash infusions to local or, or regional economies. But we can work with partners who have money, and we can work to convene, to bring the best research to bear, to help people use data to, to carefully and accurately assess the problems that exist, but also to assess impact over time. Uh, one of the key things that we're trying to help people do is realize that some of the things they've been doing for a long time are not having the impact that they wished. Not for lack of trying, but in an era of scarce resources, being able to recognize things that don't work and stopping those to free up resources to do the things that research and the, the knowledge in the field shows do work is a critical kind of a change of mind. It's very rare that people stop doing things that they've been doing for some period of time. They're naturally invested in them. But that's part of what we can bring. The table is the ability to bring these key partners to the table, to bring the analysis to the table, uh, to try to assess impact so that we're getting the most for our expenditure of resources and to stop doing some things that have been shown not to be effective. Um, so that's that's what we're doing in the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and some of our sister reserve banks around the Federal Reserve System are doing very similar kinds of work. Can you share one or two sure. of the most exciting collaborations sure. or partnerships? Sure, I'll, I'll mention two. One is uh, we call it the Working Cities or Working Communities Challenge because it isn't just about cities, it's also about rural poverty. Um, in, now, in three of the New England states in the south, we have programs going. In the three northern New England states, we're in the process of discussing with all sorts of community leaders, private sector, public sector, nonprofit, funding, uh, collaboratives, uh, discussing how we can use uh, the model and the experience with working cities that we've uh, benefited from in the south and bring them to the northern tier, which has a very different economic geography. What the Working Cities and Communities is about is providing incentive grant money so that collaboratives form around some new approaches to bringing economic development to populations and we insist on low income minority immigrant populations. That's our focus uh, for economic development. That bring prosperity to them. The most important outcome from that is not that we give them enough money to change their communities dramatically. The most important outcome is we give them the incentive to get people to work together across all of those sectors in a way that they have not before, and in a way that we hope is sustainable going forward as they work on project one, two, three, four, and five over this 10 or 15 year horizon so that real economic development occurs. You know, it's motivated by the fact that we've, we and others have tried economic development strategies for decades, 50, 60 years, and the amount of progress we made is, is really woefully small. That means you got to try something different. That means you've got to collaborate with you that you did not before. That means you have to try things that research suggests might work, but then you have to continue to measure to see if they are working. And if they're having impact, good, do some more of that. And if they're not, stop it or change what you're doing so that it has more chance of bringing benefit 
to low income minority immigrant populations. You mentioned so that's working city. You mentioned in your talk this morning the need for ongoing economic or innovation in the economic arena. Is there a need for and what would it look like if we did social innovation to complement that? Yeah. There is a need for it, yes. Um, there are difficulties in how the financing of that works, as you probably know. Uh, you know what it, so if you're building a building, immediately you, you, help you rent the space out, you get economic returns, you get tenant leases, they pay back a stream of income, so it's easy to say what the return is. When it comes to social investing, the returns are somewhat more diffuse. They're spread across populations. They don't always arise in the form of cash payments that are coming to a set of owners. So it's, it may be harder to assess the progress, but we, like you, I think, we think it's just as important because in the end what happens is if you're successful in bringing economic development to various locations, the benefits redound to everybody. The entire community benefits, all of the businesses, all of the nonprofits, the education system, of course, the residents benefit from having new skills and new employment opportunities that are sustainable, that give them a sustainable economic um, future, which they might not have had before. So, I, the idea, you know, absolutely resonates with it. That's kind of what we're trying to do. We haven't structured it in the sense of a social investment model, that sort of thing. But those things may work. The early days of that suggest it's complicated to do, but the intent of that, to my mind, is exactly right. There are things that need to be done through collaboration that are not going to be funded just by private interests because that's not what they're built to do. But private interests do have an interest in collaborating with others to bring up the economic vitality of the, the domains in which they operate. So so I, I love the idea, and we are, in a sense, working on it, maybe not literally what you said, but very close to it. A, a follow-on question, and perhaps our final question. Um, how can small businesses, like Bernard's and mine, and those we work with, those we're surrounded with, partner and collaborate with you to bring about that, that social and economic change that you're talking about? So we have some experience, uh, first comes to mind is Holyoke in Massachusetts. Um, it's through the Working Cities program. Their focus was on helping Latino entrepreneurs succeed. So they're all small businesses. They were making you know, um, ethnic foods, for example, with a relatively small clientele. What has been very helpful for them is one, understanding the um, structural institutional barriers that make it difficult for small businesses to, to succeed. So that could be about the way space is rented out, the way taxes are, uh, you know, the, or the way um, immigrant status is treated in various applications. So understanding some of the structural institutional barriers. The other key aspect is providing technical assistance for businesses that are getting started because whether it's a Latino business or anybody else's business, it is not easy, as you know, to start and sustain a small business. And so giving people, um, getting folks who have already had some success to volunteer their time to mentor new business owners so that they avoid many of the pitfalls that new small businesses often face, that helps a lot. And then finally, where it's possible, helping small businesses to connect to a larger, more sustainable business so a typical example is you supply, you know, hospital uniforms, say, okay, that's great. You're supplying to some small, you know, doctor's offices. What if you were able to hook up to the largest medical establishment in the region and become one of their key suppliers? Now you have a reliable, stable source of revenue for your output. And to the extent that we can make those sorts of connections, that's great. And in many cases, the small businesses don't really know how to approach larger businesses as a, as, a, as a supplier, a potential supplier. And so there, we have helped with programs, we have a program of our own, just to help small businesses and diverse businesses understand the machinery of getting connected to larger users of their services. So that's, that's another thing we're involved in. At another point, I really would love to talk about our project on uh, wealth disparities, because to me it's, it's, it's another huge um, gap that we need to address and what are the sources of those wealth disparities across races and ethnicities. Um, we have some great research that's published on our website. We have some great advocates for that, and we work with folks to help people understand where those wealth disparities come from. It's not because people don't work enough, or even because they don't have high enough income. There are deep and long-lasting institutional sources of those wealth gaps, which we need everybody to know more about in order to think about how to change them. So, uh, That's great. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. And we'll um, put a link in this video yeah. to your website so that we can all get educated. Terrific.
what you do, what you influence, and how we can partner with you. Yep, well, that'd be great. Thank you all. Thank you. More Jeff. eyeballs, the better. Thank That's you. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank, Thank you. Great to Thank see you. you. Thank you both.